we are going on the perfect ride. Now here at GCN, we've been incredibly lucky to ride in some phenomenal places, but there is one country that really stands out to us, and that is Italy. Ah. Yep, so we're going on the perfect Italian ride. I'm taking this greyhound with me, and you, of course. This is why we do it. It is the tarmac that dreams are made of. This is what cycling is all about. Everywhere you look, desktop screensaver. With 51 of them, Italy boasts more UNESCO heritage sites than any other country. But within all those, there's one that really stands out to us and where we've picked to do this ride, and that is the Dolomites. Why, you ask? Look at it. Yeah, and I guess... Look at that. It's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for us, every perfect ride has to involve epic climbs like these. Because of the breathtaking scenery, they provide those exhilarating descents and the sense of accomplishment when you hit those peaks. Absolutely. I mean, some of you might think the perfect ride is much flatter than this, but as Hank says, there's no glory without suffering. Yeah, I feel like I'm going to suffer today, mate. Right. Let's go. The route we're doing today is 120 kilometers and is one we highly recommend you have a go at. If you want to take a look at it or try it yourself, it's on Kamut and it features four iconic Dolomiti climbs. The Pordoi, the Fearsome Jow, the Falzarego and the Fidaya, resulting in over 3,000 meters of elevation. Many of these roads also make up the Queen stage, stage 20 of this year's Giro d'Italia, including a summit finish on the Fidaia, or Marmalada as it's also known. That's also the final climb we're doing today too. And if you want to see the pros do it much faster than us, well, you know what to do. Be sure to check out the race on GCM Plus. It's going to be absolutely incredible. Of course, it wouldn't be the perfect Italian ride without a pair of perfect Italian bikes. And I think you'll agree, we've done rather well. Fortunately, two legendary Italian cycling brands stepped in and offered to help us make this video possible. Campagnolo and Colnago. I mean, just look at those paint jobs. Fantastic, aren't they? Well, more on these bikes later on in the video. We've also got a more in-depth look at the bikes and tech we're using on the GCN Tech channel, so you can go check that out too. But I think we should get cracking on this ride. I'm, re oh, I'm really excited. These bikes are so nice. All right, let's go. Ah. Now, for me, the perfect ride has got to incorporate the ultimate cafe stops. And here in Italy, offers unbelievable cuisine at the tops of these sensational mountains. Yeah, Italy has amazing food. But first on our menu today, Hank, oh, no. is this. Our first climb of the day, straight out the bat. Just like... No oh, warm-up. No warm-up, straight on it. The Paso Pordoi. Now, I've got some, some quick fire stats for Hit you. Me. 13 kilometers long, oh. average of 6%, Ouch. over 2,000 meters high, and 28 switchbacks. That's more than Alp d'Huez. Oh my God. Sensational. So let's just say we're starting with a big one. Yeah. The Pordoi has some fantastic Giro d'Italia history. Yeah, it does. It was first used in the race in 1937. And the great Fausto Coppi, El Campionissimo, the champion of champions, first crested the top, leading the race in 1940. And, well, <laughs> he, he did so 
on five occasions. And when he sadly died in the 1960s, the race organizers decided to honor him by creating a special prize, the uh, Chima Kopi, which is awarded every year in the Giro d'Italia to the rider that crests the highest point of the race first. And that depends on what the highest point of the race is that year, but on 13 occasions, it's been this climb, the Pordoi. And it's gonna be a 14th, because this year's race, it's also the Chima Copy. One key distinction is that when the Giro often uses this climb, they actually come up the opposite side to us now. So it's a shorter, steeper side. But uh, I think it's a shame because the side up from Canizé, where we've come, is, uh, well, for me, it's the more beautiful side. It's stunning. Now, it has to be said, this time of year is one of the best to be out in the mountains. It's pretty much empty. We haven't seen a car. We've got snow-capped peaks and it's warm enough so we can be in shorts and jersey when it heats up a little bit later on in the day. But what a time to enjoy these mountains. It's just so beautiful. That's it. I've taken the GCN Chima copy, put in a little dig and dispatchioed Hank. Yes, dropped him again. <laughs> this is going to be an epic descent. This is what cycling is all about. Watch out for marmots though. <laughs> this tarmac is so unbelievably perfect. Like, oh God. It is the tarmac that dreams are made of. So much grip on the corners, so fast rolling. So we've just come off the Paso Poridoi that, well, lived up to his name as being an unbelievable descent. And now we're heading into the valley and then we're gonna wind our way up to the Jowl, which uh, Ollie's reminded me is notorious for being pretty gruesome. <laughs> which worries me because you're a greyhound at the minute and me not so much. Oh gosh. It's business time now, because we're on arguably the hardest climb of the day. This is the fearsome Paso Jao, which is nine and a half kilometers with an average gradient of about 10%. And that, that's what makes it so hard. It's, it's unrelenting between, you know, nine and 11% the whole way. Ollie, you chucked me some facts. Yeah. Hitting the Paso Portoi. Hit me, man. It's only right that I chucked you some facts about the Jao. Now, Funnily enough, the Jao was only incorporated in the Giro d'Italia on the 56th edition. And on that very edition, none other than Eddie Merckx went on to take the title and claim his fourth out of five victories. And in doing so, completed the first ever Vuelta Giro double. A couple more facts. Now, that was in 1973, I believe. And uh, back then, this road was gravel, so they didn't tarmac it. How until, on earth did they do that? Well, they didn't tarmac it until the 80s, but 
I think it's quite funny because people make out like gravel climbs in Grand Tours is a new thing, and it's not. <laughs> That's the proof. So uh, we're going to push on now. It's going quite, going quite slow. What do you mean? Well, it's no, quite Ollie. slow, this. Ollie, we've come to the Dolomites, to these beautiful climbs, to enjoy the climbs, Ollie. Yeah, but it's, the bike feels amazing. Ollie! Ollie! Ollie, come on, man! Order me a cappuccino. And a panini! The Jow certainly is breathtaking physically, but thankfully it's also breathtaking visually. And the, the scenery certainly does help distract you from the effort at hand. You've got the Codalonga River that snakes its way up the valley alongside and sometimes under the road. It's stunning. But in terms of the gearing I'm using today, right now I'm in my easiest gear. So, Campagnolo Super Record EPS is 12 speed. And that really makes sense on climbs like this because, well, it gives you a nice big range. I've got an 11.29. I feel that's not quite enough for me. Maybe it is for you. But even with that wide range cassette, because it's got 12 and not 11, the gaps between the gears are just that bit smaller. And, but, Campagnolo does make a 34 tooth, 1134, which, if I'm being honest with myself, that's what I wish I had today. <laughs> this is tough. So it's fair to say, these climbs are definitely where you can test yourself. You can get in your own little world, get immersed in the unreal surroundings. And there's something, something beautiful about climbing in the high mountains. You're on your own, you're in your own little head, and you're just taking in these epic views. Fair to say though, Ollie is ripping up the pavement today. I just hope he remembers my panini. Ah, that one and a half K to go. Oh, oh, this is hard. It's a cool thing when you're cycling in May is because you've still got quite a bit of snow left, you can always know which way is north. That's the north face, because as soon as you then look on the southern face, none of the southern faces have snow on them. Cool, I feel like Ray Mears telling you that. My hero. Right, is this where we get to taste some Italian cuisine? Unfortunately, it's shut. Oh, come off it, Ollie. <laughs> we'll descend and find something. Are you kidding me? It's all right, we'll just descend and find something, you're good. But I'll tell you what, the accomplishment of summiting a high mountain in a snow-capped peak is next to nothing, I tell you. It's the best, isn't it? Such a good feeling. The crisp air. I mean, it's... I love it when the snow banked up like this. So it's, beautiful. It's amazing. Uh, right, it's down, it's down, let's get some food. What, you're not gear? Yeah, yeah. What? Well, the climb's taking my breath away. Uh, yeah, genuinely, like, uh, in the views and uh, in the uh, steepness of the... Uh, are you all right? Yeah, I'll give you a head start. All right, mate. Yeah, see you later. When you see snow, it's got to be done. Yes! The descent's the best!
following the jow, this is the third climb we're on now, which is the Falzarego. And this is one of the longest climbs in the Dolomites region, and it's 20 kilometers long, but where we've picked it up, coming off the jow, knocks out the large part of the first bit from Cortina. So we're only doing about 11 kilometers. <laughs> which is definitely enough, but one we can savor, enjoy, get our breath back before yeah. we hit the last and big one. Yeah, because this is, it averages about 5%. So as Hank says, definitely one to just chill out and admire the scenery, which is ridiculous. Because yeah. in every direction, it's like a, a desktop background, like there, there, there. Yeah. And while we're talking about savoury and enjoying this climb, it's about time. Well, we, we say about what we're riding. I mean, look at it. We're riding one of the most prestigious, traditional bike brands and Italian bike brands for that matter. Look at them, they're Carl Nagos, decked out in Campagnolo. He's struggling. Yeah. He's really getting out of breath. <laughs> Already. Oh, brilliant. Already. Brilliant. It is so special riding. Such prestigious brands. I mean, Campagnolo. They invented the group set. Like, you know, more people have won tours to France and Giro d'Italia, or Giri, uh, using Campagnolo than any other, any other manufacturer of components. And, well, I mean, Colnago started in 1954 in a little shed by Ernesto, who's still going now. And oh, it's just the champions, all the, so many of the greats of our sport have ridden Colnagos with Campagnolo. You know, you think Eddie Merckx, but most recently, Tade Pogaccia. Yeah, and we're also paying homage by using pink bottles today. Yeah. Mm. Ah, we love the Jewish Italia. This is the descent off the Falzarego and I enjoy the descents as much as the climbs in this part of the world. They're, they're phenomenal. Through every, all the hairpins and through the winding turns. I mean, if, if there's anything that's going to put a smile on my face, it's speed and it's flowing corners and silky smooth tarmac. Now this is why we ride a bike. Back into the valley. And oh my gosh, the temp has got a lot warmer. It's amazing the difference. It's about 28 degrees. Mm. All right. Oh, that tastes so good. We've finally found a cafe. One, so one thing we should point out is in May, it's great because it's so quiet around here. The roads are amazing and you've got snow still on the sides of the roads and it's fantastic, but hardly any cafes are open. <laughs> so yeah. we've been... Ollie sold this ride to me on the pretenses <laughs> that we would stop at loads of coffee stops. And um, well, this is the first one we've stopped at three quarters of the way through the ride. We've only got one climb left. Nevertheless, I'm enjoying every moment of this I, coffee. I, I, Colnago is like a, a, a quintessentially Italian brand, Campagnolo too. And, you know, the, the, the made in Italy C68, it really does stand out, doesn't it, amongst the crowd. But for me, the, the biggest thing that stands out about it, unlike all the other top end bikes that you get from other manufacturers, it's not designed to win the Tour de France or the Giro d'Italia, which is like a big distinction from, you know, all the aero models that other brands make. And, I think, you know, cycling around here and seeing a lot of amazing cars as well, it's made me think, well, it's like, it's like a car, because there's loads of cars out there that you can buy that are phenomenal driver's cars, sports cars, that aren't purist racing cars designed around a track, you know, convertibles, basically. Mm. Like, convertibles are a great example. They're not as aerodynamic. But on a day like today, on roads like this, with scenery like this, what would you rather have a convertible or, you know, a stuffy little race car with no comforts. Yeah, I'm gonna set, say the convertible. And yeah. um, on that point, um, I'd rather have this panini right now. Yeah. Oh, I can't wait for this. Oh, well, oh, 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 everything, everything's fine now. 
Mm. Right, calf stop done. Last climb of the day now, come on. Yeah, it is the last one, but nevertheless, it's a big one, and it goes hand in hand with the other three I've done, because, or well, we've done, because it sits at 14 kilometers long and 2,036 meters high. So the last one's a big one. Right. Oh, legs a bit sore. This is it, our final big climb of the day. Here it goes. The Fadaya. It's a tough one. 14 odd kilometers at seven and a half percent. And, well, cool thing. This is gonna be the summit finish on uh, stage 20 of this year's Giro d'Italia. That's it. Yeah, so I think we should have our own GCN summit finish. Oh, great idea. Yeah, great idea. God, I've never been so happy. Yeah. All right. Also, fun fact for you. Yeah. This was actually the location used for the film Italian Job, not for the original. Yep, that was the Nivellet where we've been. That's it, but for the new one in 2003. Oh. So there you are. Cool. That was, we've com we're going to complete the set. <laughs> we are indeed, I'll take that. So uh, basically what you're saying for this summer finish is I'm guaranteed second place. Yeah, what I'm going to do is uh, probably go now, actually. See you, bye. Oh, here we go. Right. Who gave Ollie climbing legs? So, as Ollie forges ahead, and I've got a confirmed P2, I think it's about time that I just kind of enjoy it. Now, I've never ridden a Colonago. I've also never ridden Campagnolo. So I've got to say, the first time riding this iconic bike and iconic group set is among these iconic climbs. And there's something to be said with that. You don't have to race all the time. Sometimes you just got to enjoy it. So it's about time that I enjoy this insane bike and breathtaking scenery. Uh, I wonder how all it's getting on. I'm putting a bit of a, a dig at the bottom of the climb and I've got a good gap on Hank. So as long as I can maintain this effort now and keep it steady, I reckon I can do him, <laughs> which is nice after all the times he's dropped me. But I think let's see how many minutes I can put into him. Back home, back at the restaurant, grappa, pizza, pasta. Try to think of anything else Italian. Just not Hawaiian. Alan told me that was a no-go. This climb is savage. Over there, first 7K. I averaged 18 kilometers an hour. And now, on this middle section, I'm crawling. It is killer. Really, really hard. So one of the things that's making this climb so hard is the fact that they're resurfacing it at the moment, presumably in preparation for the Giro d'Italia. So I'm on the wrong side of the road because it's tarmac, but I can see everything that's coming, so I'm not unsafe. I can move out the way I have to. It's just so much easier.
and this is a truly brutal summit finish. Ooh. Sometimes you're the hammer, sometimes you're the nail. Today it seems I'm firmly the nail. Ooh. Mate, that was ridiculous. I don't know, the first half wasn't too bad, but then as soon as you hit the, the ski lifts, it suddenly ramps up and it just unrelents at like 15%, like the entire way. It is the worst when it's just like straight and steep because you expect yourself to go a bit faster. That, that's made me really excited for the Giro now. Yeah. Because that climb, that is, that, there's going to be fireworks on that second half of that climb. It's going to detonate. It's... I can't wait to see wins. Yeah, I can't. Well, if you want to watch it, you can tune in on GCN Plus. This is, well, this is the summit finish of our ride. All that remains for us now. Thank God. <laughs> Holy thank God. I thought I'm you were going to say, oh, Hank, Hank, we've got to go up one more and I was about to shoot you. <laughs> we'll we'll chuck you in there. <laughs> and we hope you've enjoyed this. And, you know, if you want to ride this yourself, check out the route on Camus. Massive thanks to Colnago and Campagnolo for providing us with these amazing bikes and, and making this amazing dream ride happen. And, uh, well, if you enjoyed it, Thumbs up, right. Yeah, and if you thought this was the most quintessential Italian ride, finishing with a bit of pizza, then let us know in the comment section below. And I guess, Ollie, <clears throat> we'll see you in the next, uh, <coughs> we'll see you in the next. <coughs> yeah, at least you tried as hard as I did. Oh.